Okay, so this is um, video number 11 in the Red Flags of a Narcissist series. This is red flag number 11, which is status oriented. Um, probably not a huge shocker <laughs> that a lot of narcissists are very status oriented and it's a way, like everything else, it's a way for them to feed their ego, right? So it's a very quick visual way to let other people know, hey, I'm important, look at me. So it's, you know, often comes across as, you know, designer labels, um, you know, high-end cars. Uh, you know, it can be advanced degrees. It can be things like that. It tends to be more so uh, things that a total stranger could see on the street, you know, like, like brand names. Um, not all narcissists are created equal and not all narcissists are status oriented. Like, for example, you have cerebral narcissists. These narcissists tend to be um, more fixated on, or they get their ego fed, I should say, through their intellect. So it's very important for them to know, or for them to let you know just how smart they are. In fact, they're so damn smart, they're smarter than you and they're smarter than me. And they will remind you of that at every single turn. <laughs> so, um, but okay, so with that said, because I was thinking about one narcissist in particular, a lot of these red flags will blur. So it's not like a hard line. It's not like saying, okay, well, all cerebral narcissists, um, you know, are only focused on their intellect and they don't care about status at all. That's just the somatic narcissists. That's not necessarily true. So for example, the cerebral narcissist that I'm thinking of, he was married to a friend of mine. Um, they have been divorced now for about 10 years, thank goodness. But he was a mechanical engineering professor and was very much an elitist. He didn't like any of us. He only liked my friend. My friend did not have an advanced degree. Um, I, I, it was the weirdest thing. Like I really don't know why he kind of let her into his inner circle, but um, he didn't really even spend time with his own children. He didn't, he, again, what was that? Red flag number seven, fragmented relationships. Didn't have a really close-knit relationship with his kids or his own parents. His one sister, I believe, was no longer talking to him. Of course, he said she was an alcoholic, which goes back to red flag number six, unusual amount of crazy people. I would be curious to know the truth now that I'm saying this out loud. <laughs> like, she really is an alcoholic, and she. I think he also said she was bipolar. Wow. So, you know, who's to say if that's really true or if that's a whole smear campaign? But um, anyhow... He was status oriented, but he was also a cerebral narcissist. He didn't drive a flashy car. His his only um, focus for like status stuff was everything had to be Ralph Lauren. Everything was polo. Everything had a little pony on it. Everything, his underwear, his socks, you know, his shirts, obviously, baseball caps, whatever, all had Ralph Lauren, everything. Um, an interesting side note that I hadn't really thought about until kind of fairly recently. So narcissist number two that I dated. Um, so basically my story, okay, my story is that I dated two covert narcissists almost back to back, like within a five year span. I had two very serious relationships with both of them, both of which I thought we were gonna get married and that fell apart at the seams for the, actually for like almost the exact same reasons. They both had double lives, they were triangulating, it was, um, lies and deceit and chaos and mayhem and foolishness. It was a bunch of ridiculousness. But narcissist number two, I had known for several years. Um, he, everybody loved him. He was very witty, very charming, um, a good listener, <laughs> like red flags, uh, really one through 10, <laughs> pretty, pretty much. And, but when I had known him, um, he was married and it was, he was kind of one of those guys, everybody had a crush on him, but nobody was going to act on it. I mean, he was married. So it, and it was, he was one of my instructors when I was in nursing school and, um, but only for, uh, advanced, um, cardiac life support. So like ACLS and PALS and those kinds of advanced life support type classes. So, and it was at the tail end of my final semester and, um, somebody in the class had mentioned that my boyfriend, the guy I dated between the two narcissists, um, had a had a Lamborghini, and this guy did. He was very well to do, and but oh, he was such a he was a jerk, and I don't know why I stayed with him as long as I did. I did I shouldn't have, but um, 
so somebody had brought up, and this guy was very into uh, like racing. He was into like race trucks and he, cars, like things with motors and wheels, like <laughs> is what he was into. And somebody had brought that up in class. And it was the weirdest thing. It was like Steve all of a sudden noticed me. And I remember journaling about that and thinking he has never looked twice at me. Now, granted, of course, he's, he was married at the time, but there was never... Um, I really didn't even think he knew who I was. So, but it was after that class and he was joking around and he wanted to know more because Steve had a BMW and Steve wanted to know more about my ex's Lamborghini. And um, I was joking around and I said, well, you know, if you're so interested in it, he's single now. So if you want his phone number, I can give it to you. And, um, you know, we're kind of laughing it off. And then kind of things progressed. He ended up getting my number through some kind of series of events. I had to take a, um, a CPR class along with some other people and we were running late and it wasn't anything inappropriate. And so then I noticed, it was, so we started texting and then he was telling me, you know, he wasn't happily married and um, he'd left before, but then his wife had lied and said that she had cancer. And so he moved back to take care of her because he'd had cancer and he knew how awful that was and didn't want her to have to go through that. And um, but that they were in separate bedrooms, their, their marriage had been dead for many, many years. And I had said, you know, basically, I'm not getting involved with the married man. So if your marriage has really run its course, you need to move out and file for divorce and then give me a call. He actually did that the next day. And I had no, you know, reason to believe him. I mean, he had, no, well, he was completely emotionally detached. He just didn't seem to care he didn't seem upset. Like he really seemed like a man who had been in a loveless marriage for a long time and was ready to move on with the next chapter in his life. And of course things moved way too fast with us. Um, so, and that's a whole, you know, I'll, that's a whole nother video, but he, the point being is he didn't even notice me until somebody had said that my ex had this, this fancy sports car. And then it was like his ears perked up, you know, like, oh, oh, okay. So, you know, not only are they status oriented in their, um, you know, their own life, like they want to have designer brands and all that. I think they're also on the lookout for other people that have money, which is interesting because in that situation, right? Like my ex-boyfriend's financial situation in no way, shape or form reflected my own, but I think it was more the idea of, well, if a guy that drives a Lamborghini likes her, then she must be worth something. Then she must, you know, she's, I don't know, like like a prized asset or something. It was just, I'm sure that it was some sort of like warped logic with that. Um, so status oriented, watch out for people that are trying too hard to impress you. Um, oh, okay. And another example, Jack, the first covert narcissist I dated, you know, he was pretty much flat broke, not pretty much. He was flat broke. He was working, you know, he was making you know, maybe 10 bucks an hour. He couldn't hold a job, super intelligent guy. I had kind of thought he was at like kind of a low point in his life because he was so smart. It just seemed like he couldn't really get traction in any way. So he had all these stories about how he, he was getting fired and all these, you know, forces are aligning against him. And I really believed him because he just was too smart and capable to be kind of what doing what he was doing um, financially and bouncing checks and, and all that. So, but Jack, so anyway, so he's basically broke and he has this watch that's like a four or $5,000 watch. And he made sure to wear it out every single time we went out in public. And I remember thinking that it was so pathetic and ridiculous and insecure that he had to wear this watch, especially when it wasn't a reflection of where he was today financially. It was more this idea of, you know, I hope other people see this so that I can impress them. And, you know, here he was, he was mooching off of me. He was borrowing money from his elderly parents. Um, you know, he's bouncing checks. He can't hold the job, but sure has this expensive watch. Um, you know, it's just all about status. And I think too, probably like a large reason that they are so status oriented is it's, of course it's to feed their ego because like everything is to feed their ego. But I think it's also to give that illusion of success and that illusion of wealth because, you know, again, what is it? Red flag number eight, poor financial management. 
red flag number 19, which we'll get to, parasitic existence. They are mooches by nature. So they're going to be hitting you up for money at some point. And you, they have to make their victim feel confident that you're going to get repaid or that they're somehow good for it. But the reality is they're not. Um, so that's red flag number 11. Red flag number 12, which is up next, is victim slash hero speak. Okay? Like usual, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, frustrations, ideas for videos, uh, you want to say hi, chat me up. You can chat me up on YouTube down below in the message field, or you can find me on Facebook. My group is called Narcissist Support, or you can go to my website, which is NarcissistSupport.com. I would be curious to know what have you noticed with narcissists being status oriented? Was your narcissist status oriented? Um, or maybe not at all. So... I'd be curious if you're, if you feel comfortable sharing, go ahead and share it here, share it on my website, wherever, if you're not comfortable sharing in public, but you still want to share, email me or message me privately. And, um, I'd be more than happy to share your experience. Or if you have any questions, be more than happy to ask them anonymously and, um, and just kind of go from there. So, okay, we'll see you soon. Bye.